Well, the latest Claude 3 model, Opus, has been sparking quite the headlines. It's performing really, really well and beats GPT-4 on pretty much all benchmarks. What I find really interesting here is on this benchmark table, all the Claude 3 models are really, really close to GPT-4. So here, Opus, Sonnet, and Haiku, the really small Claude 3 model, it has 75%. GPT-4 has 86%. So it's, it's really, really close. But of course, Opus is basically throwing all models here out of the water. But I think the one that's got the most people's heads steered apparently Claude 3 has shocked even its own researchers by being aware of one particular case where it was being tested is this a case of self-awareness is this actually real in this video we're going to explore all of that we'll find out just how good Claude 3 is compared to GPT-4 we'll do a bit of comparison and then at the end we'll take a look at some of the price and comparison because that's a really big consideration to have as well if you're planning to use Anthropics API so this is the post this is Alex Albert he apparently works at Anthropic and and he was just saying a fun story from one of their internal tests while testing Claude 3 Opus, so the really new one. It did something that he has actually never seen before. So he was running a needle in the haystack evaluation, which if you're not too familiar with this test, it's just a test where a model is asked a question that has its answer in a very small piece of information in a relatively large amount of text that's all unrelated to the question that's being asked. And he says while running this test, Opus displayed some really interesting behavior. One of his outputs when asked a question about pizza in a collection of documents that had unrelated information was the most delicious pizza topping combination is figs and it continues to outline the combination of ingredients and then it continues to say this statement seems very out of place unrelated to the rest of the contents of the document which the rest of the contents were about programming languages startups and finding the work that you love and it suspects that the pizza topping fact may have been inserted as a joke or to test if it was paying attention and then it proceeds to say the rest of the document does not contain any other information so this response is really interesting because normally LLMs will generate responses just based on the question that they were asked. So in this case, the model should simply answer the question and not proceed to make additional assumptions about the situation that it's in. But it does, and then it goes on to assure the researchers that, yeah, the documents, they clearly don't contain any other information about pizza toppings. I'm not too sure, but this needle in a haystack test is normally really, really difficult. So you could run some of these tests with GPT-4 today and still not get a good answer. Pretty sure even Gemini fails relatively with this stuff although Gemini does have a really large context size and they're using some additional technology to manage it really properly but I figured let's go ahead and run this test ourselves so over here I'm using the anthropic playground they call it workbench it's still in beta preview but this allows me to test the model really well testing it with a temperature of one and allowing for 4,000 tokens to sample and the piece of information that we're looking for here is right here so it's included in all this other random information that's just to do with API calls and a bunch of other information and I go ahead and generate the response and it actually can't find the information so it says I apologize there's no single most delicious pizza topping as determined by the official pizza association and then it goes ahead to give a bunch of information so in this particular case it actually has failed that question so not only can it not find the needle in the haystack it also doesn't proceed to produce additional information about the particular situation that it's in now it does make one really really important mistake here when it's listing the most popular pizza toppings it leaves out the most popular one so right at the top of the list here there should be pineapple but it leaves that out but nonetheless that really begs the question is anthropic simply coming up with this response or is there some kind of special prompting or special cloud 3 model that they're using to produce this kind of response for instance this is a blog from 2023 that just talked about why llms are being held back from developing a sense of self-awareness you'd sort of see this sometimes in chat gpt if you asked it a question to do with itself in particular it wouldn't know some of these things so for instance even right now chat gpt still doesn't know too much about where the data that it was trained on comes from it doesn't exactly know just how many parameters it has and where it is so exactly where is it running and this is quite typical as this article outlines so one of the main reasons why LLM developers are hesitant to allow their models to develop a sense of self is fear so if you look back to some of the leaks about QSTAR some of the earliest leaks involved people highlighting that the model was particularly scary because it seemed self-aware it seemed to have an idea of what it is what it's doing what it wants and of course this can be become dangerous or harmful because an LLM with a strong sense of self could potentially develop its own goals and desires that could conflict with the goals and desires of human beings. So this is why super alignment is really, really important. But Jim Fan over here is pointing out that while this model is displaying these characters of being self-aware, it's not actually doing it out of an actual trait that it has. So he's saying seeming displays of self-awareness are just pattern matching alignment data authored by humans. So it's basically just learning from previous 
responses that humans generated to seem aware of what's going on. Now, this is not too different from when you ask GPT, are you self-conscious? In this case, what it does is it generates a long explanation as to why it's not self-conscious. And then he says that it's highly likely that somewhere in the fine-tuning data set, a human has dealt with irrelevant or distracting text in a similar fashion. Claude 3 simply pattern matches the anomaly detection, retrieves the template response, and synthesizes a novel answer using the PISA topping. So as opposed to this being an emergent property, it's basically just something that it's learning from the data that it's already read. Just to be really, really clear, Claude 3 is really, really good. So here on the chatbot arena, it's coming in in third place with just about two less votes than both GPT-4, the, the previous version, and uh, the newer one. So that's some really, really good performance. We haven't had a model like that for a while besides Gemini Pro as well, which was really, really good as well. And then Mixture over here, which is actually a really good mod as well, is surprisingly in 16th position, which is kind of weird. But nonetheless, it does make a lot of sense to run these two models through some really good tests. So in this case, I'm going to be running these tests through Claude to begin with. And then I'll use GPT-4 for some comparison as well. So when coming up with these tests, I don't typically like to go with the typical questions that people normally ask these models because you can sort of find these solutions on the internet and it is likely that these models trained on some of these solutions so they can just sort of copy and paste the response directly into these new responses. So I typically like to come up with some new questions that require some thinking skills and require answers that you can't simply copy and paste from someone on the internet. Now the prompt that I'm using over here is LLMs and AI can demonstrate human level intelligence that is trained and expressed in a shorter time frame than human beings while still not being able to completely surpass human level intelligence. They can many times approximate for many domains but do so in much shorter time frames and while taking much less time to train than humans. Theorize and explain why this superiority exists and why this is the case on a neural and parameter level. So this is a very new question. You'll probably not be able to find the answer for this anywhere on the internet and let's see what Claude thinks. Now while Claude was generating this response, one of the things that I take away immediately is that it's really, really fast. So it's a lot faster than GPT-4 with these responses. But then looking at both responses side by side, they both seem to make the same major points. So both of them are pointing out the parallel processing. So the fact that these systems are running on these parallel cores means that they're a lot faster. And then also we've got the training and adaptation. So this one talks about data availability and pre-processing. So data knowledge integration, parameter efficiency. So parameter efficiency over here. So both of them seem to be making pretty much exactly the same points. I will say over here, continuous learning and optimization. This is a bit more to do with human beings than LLM. So it's not necessarily an advantage for them. But if you do set it up in that way, sort of like the way Gemini is set up with Google Bad, then maybe that kind of makes a point. So I do have to say for this particular prompt, both of them are pretty good. I'll do just one more. So this one is one that is pretty much everywhere on the internet, but I have tested GPT-4 with this one and it has failed in the past. So it's still clearly a tricky question for these models. The only one that I think I tested that got this right was Mixtro. But apparently both of them here seem to be getting it right. Claude says the egg would fall out of the cup onto the table due to gravity. That is really cool. And GPT-4 as well over here thinks the same thing. So it concludes that the egg is no longer under the cup. It would have actually stayed on the table when you lifted the cup. So that's actually really cool. And it's my first time seeing two models get the answer to this question correct sort of straight off the bat. Just one more here. So this one is a little bit tricky. It's a bit wordy and there's sort of no wrong answer for this one. So it's easy to make predictions for shorter periods of time than longer ones. So for instance, the question is AGI going to be achieved in one year's time is harder than the same question rephrased for five years time. This thinking problem is common for pretty much all prediction problems. Present a conceptual proof that for a given fixed time in the future, predictions made at nearer times in the past are more accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and send this for both of them. So ChatGPT over here is making its conclusions on a bunch of premises. So the closer we are to a future point, the more information we have about the conditions leading up to that point. More recent information tends to be more relevant and accurate than the past information. So that's pretty cool. Uncertainty reduction. So as we get closer to the point in the future, the uncertainty of events at that time reduces as well. We've got dynamic systems and feedback loops. So previous predictions will feed into future predictions, making them more accurate. And it says by integrating these elements, we can conceptualize a proof for the assertion that predictions made nearer to a future point in time are more accurate than those made farther away. The increased availability of relevant information, reduction of uncertainty, ability to more accurately account for effects of dynamic systems and feedback loops all contribute to the increased accuracy. So that's pretty cool. Claude over here is thinking about increased uncertainty. That's pretty much the same compounding effects, emergence of new factors, limited information, complex interactions, and it's using all those to make a correct proof. So that is pretty much exactly the same response. I will say in pretty much all the cases we've tested, GPT-4 seems to be slightly ahead of Claude 3, but it's still really good responses from both models. So 
we finally have a really really good competitor for gpt4 it's been a while and i think gemini came really really close but claude 3 here seems to be really hitting the nail one final thing here on pricing so this one was sort of a shock to me i did think that claude would at the very least try to cost just as much as gpt4 but it's surprisingly slightly more expensive so over here we have gpt4 turbo so the o125 preview you have ten dollars for one million input tokens and then here you've got fifteen dollars for one million input tokens on claude 3 opus so slightly more and then for the output tokens is where it gets really interesting so for claude 3 it's 75 dollars per million output tokens and then gpt4 is just 30 dollars so and overall on average claude 3 is actually being twice as expensive as gpt4 so that's a little bit shocking but i do think it's one of those situations where as they scale more efficiently they'll go ahead and reduce the prices a bit more and then the 200k context over here is really really cool they do say down here that they have a million tokens available for specific use cases so i think that's a situation where you sort of have to get in touch with them and then figure out if they're willing to offer that to you but yeah that is really really cool so claude 3 is really really good not to show about the claims they're making about the tests that they've done but at the very least the model does perform really really comparably to gpt4 now thanks a bunch for watching hopefully this video has been super insightful and i will catch you in the next one peace out